Have you ever felt overwhelmed with the data when needing to make a decision? In theory, it's supposed to help you, but in practice, it made the task even more difficult because there was way too much. You probably stared at the data for so long that it looked like ants walking through your screen or even like a matrix code. According to Forrester research, 61 of specialists experience what you experienced. In this episode, I'm going to tell you more about the five most important things you just need to know about customer data platform before starting to work on a daily basis with it. Let's rewind a little. What is customer data platform and how does it work? A CDP is the central repository of user data. It collects not only any attributes like customer features, but also any number of unlimited types of events and maintain the relationships with other objects in other ERP, e-commerce, accounting system, or any other system in which we store information about such objects as order or invoices. As you probably already know, and if not, uh, this is what you're going to find out right now, I am a huge supporter of taking it down to the simplest possible definition. So let's start again. A CDP is a system in which you store information about your current potential or sometimes former clients. To put it plainly, it is kind of warehouse for your data. Sound simple, right? What should you know about using a CDP as a part of your daily work? These are features that the system should have. First, what are the functional requirements of the tool in order to qualify as a CDP at all? The Customer Data Platform Institute, an independent organization whose mission is to support marketers around the world in effective use of data, indicates that a CDP type tool should obtain data from a specific source, store the obtained data, identifiably, of course, subject to privacy restriction, create unified profiles of identified people, share data with any system, respond in real time to new data requests. These features distinguish CDPs from other systems that work primarily with their own data, such as customer relationship management system, store only limited date details for limited periods and include large volumes of externally owned data. Data management platform uh, do not maintain a permanent database integration platform or interactions directly with customers, email, mobile and web system or customer management system. CDP, CRM and DMP. When choosing a CDP, you will certainly find additional shortcuts such as CRM or a DMP. What exactly is the difference between customer data platform and these other tools? A customer data platform creates a customer profile by combining data from various secondary and external sources. This includes CRM and DMP, transactional system, web forms, email, and social media. Uh, behavioral data, such as user behavior data on the website and a mobile application, and much, much more. 
what are the key differences between a CDP and a CRM? A CDP collects and stores data from anonymous website visitors, while a CRM holds data from known customers or potential customers. A CDP analyzes customer behavior through the whole life cycle, both in the initial pre-purchase and post-purchase, while CRM system primarily analyze the sales funnel. A CDP tracks both online and offline customer data, while a CRM is typically unable to receive offline data unless it's something entered manually. A CRM is used to manage the company's relationship and interactions with all its current and potential customers. A CDP collects and unifies uh, customer data and then makes it available for marketers, but also sometimes uh, to people responsible for building loyalty or retention in order to create a targeted and personalized marketing campaigns or even communication campaigns. What are the difference between a CDP and a DMP? A DMP or a data management platform was created for advertising purposes and is aimed at serving advertisement displayed on the internet. A CDP collects its own data, the so-called zero and first party data, directly from the source, while a DMP mainly collects third party data via data providers, managers, and services, which is often extracted from DSP or demand side platform or SSP, a supply side platform. Lots of CDP, DMP, CRM, DSP, SSP, ADT, CPC, AMP, CMS, DTP, PPC, ERP, CL, VAR, FM, NPS, WTF. Let's not complicate it more now. Should I record another episode about all the other three letter acronyms in ad tech? Let me know in the comments. CDP reflect specific personal identifiers of customers, such as first name, last name, email address, and a customer ID, while DMP platform uh, reflect anonymous customer identifiers, such as cookies or hashes. CDP store data for a long time to build accurate customer profiles and nurture relationships, while DMP platforms store the data for a short time to target ads and build similar audiences. What data is stored? As you have already noticed, one of the tasks of a CDP is data collection. The question is, what data? For the sake of this episode, I'm going to distinguish between the three main types of customer data. First one, behavioral. Basically, this is all data about uh, a customer's behavior on a website, app, or other touch point. This is something that is generated on the basis of customers' interactions with company using devices connected to the internet. Behavioral data can also provide detailed information of the accuracy, frequency, and duration of customer interactions. Second, demographic. This is the socioeconomic information such as age, gender, population, race, income, education, interest, and employment. Demographic information may also include personal information such as names, date of birth and customer address. Third, transactional. This typically has a commercial or legal significance. 
and may include transactions such as purchase, returns, payments, registrations, booking, and subscriptions. Transaction data document exchanges, uh, contracts, or transfers between organization and or individuals. Data such as information about purchase made, location, devices, page views, and the entire communication history in many channels like emails, chat, SMS, push, mobile, are collected automatically with an embedded script on your website or a mobile tracking script. For websites, usually a short JavaScript widget or pixel places a cookie in the user browser. If we are talking about cookies, new cookie is created for each browser within a given domain and the internet user will remain the same user within one domain, leaving traces with each activity that your system will collect in detail. How to organize data structure in a CDP. What you need to know is that an ideal structure does not exist. Once created, it will evolve so it can better meet your business needs. Right now, if you are wondering how to prepare the structure and not go crazy, I recommend writing out individual columns in a spreadsheet. With the spreadsheet, you will be able to verify whenever a given structure meets your needs and you will be able to modify it uh, many times and finally scale it further in the CDP system. Each business is different and each one requires collecting different information about users in order to fully understand their needs. The feature of individual objects are the so-called attributes. The possibilities of their creation are basically unlimited. The important thing is that they will realistically support marketing and sales processes. In order to be up to date with the activities performed by the user, these so-called events. Uh, it is worth introducing a tag system that uh, we will uh, call labels. Imagine you have an ebook or instruction manual with chapters prepared uh, for you and you want to send one chapter each day. On the first day after sending the message, we'll add the tag chapter one. The next day we will remove the previous tag and add a new tag, for example, chapter two and so on. This allows you to easily filter users who are in the campaign in order to send them a message. Example, requesting a comment or uh, those who have already completed the entire cycle and can be offered the following products. We can tag customer with a medium size baskets by the length of a common purchase history, etc. Cookie-less and GDPR. How does the collection and processing of data by a CDP relate to GDPR and the blocking of cookies in the popular browsers? Plus the cookie-less future we're looking at in the world. Cookie-less uh, is a new approach to marketing based to lesser extent so-called third-party cookies containing data identifying consumers. You will think, wait a minute, the data I collect identify consumers? The blocking of cookies applies to third-party cookies. Uh, the data that you collect and have at your digital fingerprints and those your customers consciously shared with you is uh, the so-called zero and first-party data. Zero data is the data that uh, the customers has purposefully and proactively made available to you. This is the declarative data that I have already mentioned earlier. 
First party data is the data of an user behavior and actions on a website or application, data from analytical tools or data from a CRM and CDP systems, including information such as names, email addresses, and information about past purchases. You'll need to know that as a consumers, we do not want a complete ban on the use of our data. Research conducted by Dentsu showed that every second person consider it important that the organization obtains consent to collect data in order to provide them with more personalized advertising. So you can breathe deeply and still imagine what you can do with all the data you have or about to get hold of. And even the GDPR will not prevent you from doing so. But of course, I am not a lawyer and would recommend uh, you to consult it with uh, your DPO, your data protection officer. In your CDP, you can keep all information about your users in one place. One central database helps to manage personal data consent given by users, as well as ability to delete all this information in a blink of an eye if the need arises. Each user has the right to demand the termination of the processing of their data and the, the deletion of uh, their system, giving them to the right to be forgotten. According to the GDPR Act, at the request of the user, the company processing his data is obliged to disclose it to the indicated entity. All information you have about a given user can be exported from your CDP to a file at any time and sent to any place chosen by user. What you need to pay attention to in the context of the GDPR is whenever your servers storing the personal data of European Union citizens are located as required by the law in the European Economic Zone. The providers of CDP class systems make sure that this formality is also completed, or at least with good CDP vendors. As you can see, by using a CDP, you can pin the GDPR compliant badge to yourself and your company, although this is a marketing ploy rather than a legal certificate such as CE. And don't worry about legal issues. If you are interested, I would recommend you can check out a great case study about how LG was able to follow GDPR compliance with their CDP system. You can find the link to the case study in the video description. This is uh, the starting point of the things you need to know before using a CDP. Let me know what else we should add to the list or maybe when you started yourself there was something that, you surpri that surprised you and you would like to share it with me. I'm looking forward for your comments. Thank you.